Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Romans chapter 3, verses 3. The Bible says, What if some did not believe? What if some did not believe? Praise God. What if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Because somebody does not believe God the way you believe God, does that mean that their unbelief will make the faith of God without effect? That's a question. Somebody shout hallelujah. What if they don't believe? What if the stuff spoken is not believed by the people around you? What if the things God has told you and he has said in the word, the folk around you don't believe? What if they don't believe? What if some don't believe our reports? What if some people are not as crazy as you are? What if? Just what if? Some people don't see things the way you see them. What if they think things are supposed to take longer than they are supposed to? What if? What if they think you're crazy? Somebody shout amen. What if they think you are crazy? What if the stuff that you're talking about cannot connect to them from where they think and see? What if some did not believe? Do you know how many people have left the faith because of other people? Do you know how many people have walked out on God because of other people? Do you know how many people have disconnected from the things they need because of other people? Do you know how many people have drawn back to perdition because of other people? Do you know how many people have been destroyed? Because of other people who could not believe God a certain way. So what if some did not believe? What if they didn't believe? What if you get in a space and start to proclaim your faith and then you hang around people and then you start to realize that they don't quite connect to the things that you're talking about? What if they don't? Praise God. I just tell people that it's important, it's expedient for everyone to know God their own way. It's okay for people to give you opinion about the things of God. But what does God say? It's not enough that you told me something. I have to go deep and ask God, concerning this, where are you on this? What's your mind on this issue? Somebody said, Hallelujah. Because you see, I have realized that even in the life of faith, there are people who can disconnect you from the God-ordained destiny of your life if you're not wise. And some of you live under other people's thermostats. Your body responds to their temperature of comfort. When they can believe God for 20, you believe God for 20. Their faith is your standard. But what if they stop believing? Somebody shout hallelujah. What if they don't believe? We're living in a time where, of course, every other day, certain places in the world are disconnecting from faith. Some people cannot believe God a certain way. 
But what if they don't believe that miracles still happen? What if they don't believe that blind eyes still open? What if they don't believe that deaf ears still hear? What if they don't believe that tumors still live? What if they don't believe that dead men are still raised today? What if they don't believe? Somebody shout hallelujah. I always tell people faith is personal. Faith is not corporate. Somebody said hallelujah. The anointing is but faith isn't. At the particular point you have to believe God yourself. You have to hear God for yourself. There are people who are hard for in every way they have to hear for them. Even people who cannot hear, hear for them. Somebody said amen. Aristotle people. Not everybody has the right to speak into your life. You can give it, but not everybody has a right to speak into your life. Somebody said amen. <laughs> Look at fruit. When you see fruit, then they can speak. Do you understand what I'm saying? Come and I teach you how to do it when you're broke. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Physician. <laughs> Heal thyself first. Do you understand? Fix you, then teach me how to fix me. Are you following what I'm trying to tell you? I learn from people that have fruit. Not just words. But the results of their faith must be evident. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Now, Paul in Romans 3, verse 3 and 4, he's opening a very wonderful conversation. Now, he says, what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? What if they can't believe God to a certain level, to a certain degree, to a certain dimension of faith? And verse 4 says, God forbid. He says, yeah, let God be true, but every man a liar. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Tell your neighbor, let God be true, and every man a liar. In other words, he's saying that no testimony of man can match the accuracy and level of truth the word of God is. It doesn't matter how good it is. No testimony of man can get to the level of God's truth. Even the rightest man, the correctest man, cannot level to the truth of God. Somebody shout amen. Sometimes situations happen. And I know each one of us has gone into place. Where we have questioned, why hasn't it not worked? Why haven't things gone the way I expected them to go? I prayed. I believed the word of God. Back in the years, many years ago, I used to have a group of friends. And sometimes we'd sit in conversations. And somebody would open a conversation like, but does God really exist? No, let's think about it. Guys, let's reason. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? And then people will start reasoning. If he exists, why does this happen? If he exists, why does this happen? If God exists, why does this happen? And then the best start ensuing between people who are, some are defending God emotionally. And I've realized that that's a big bait when it comes to the Christians. Many Christians defend their faith more emotionally than revelation. Many Christians defend their faith more emotionally than experience in God. Somebody shout amen. And that is why when we are provoked to certain spaces, we cannot respond. Because there comes a point where all mentions must cease. And the practical sense of proof is given. 
who is following what I'm trying to tell you. That is why by the end of tonight, I want to provoke you to answer anybody who questions your faith in God. Somebody shout amen. Shout amen. The word of God works. The word of God works. It works. It works. It works. Are you hearing me? It works. And it does not work for one person only. It works for all who believe. Somebody shout amen. The Bible says all things are possible to him that believeth. In Numbers chapter 23, verses 19, the Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. No, he didn't say that he will lie. That he should. Because man should lie. Man will eventually lie. Did you understand what I just said? When he says God is not a man that he should. Should. It's in man to lie. It's in man to tell a lie. It's unavoidable. Even when a man is as true as can be, he ends up in a lie. Because he's not aligned to truth. Do you understand what I'm saying? You see, we are still dealing with a generation that has not yet quite understood the difference between fact and truth. Between accuracy and truth. Between correctness and truth. Do you understand what I'm saying? Whether you're talking of correctness, whether you're talking of rightness, whether you're talking about fact, that is subject to change in the eyes of who observes it. But truth is absolute. Somebody said amen. And you know, sometimes we think or we appear to understand this. But then certain things happen and they prove we actually don't understand it. We actually don't understand it. Why? Because I find that Many times in Christianity, we respond more to facts than truth. Our ears are inclined to facts than truth. You understand what I'm saying? Why would somebody go to seek for a fact when they have the truth? You even go and pay for the fact. Consultation. <laughs> You even go and pay for a what? Because the fact can kill too. <laughs> because it has a certain level of proof that can change a man's destiny. Depending on where the man is. That's why Angel says, they that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. Some people have a way of observing lying vanities. And guess what? In scripture, the lying vanities are actually facts. <laughs> They're actually correct things. They're actually right. But not with the rightness of God. Not with the truth that is given from God. Somebody said hallelujah. And that is why every time we are speaking and preaching, we are trying to awaken us to a certain consciousness. That the God had had. Let this mind be in you as was in Christ. There's a certain mindset we're trying to plant in the faith. There's a certain way we're supposed to see things. There's a certain understanding we're supposed to have in the way of life. Because if you don't deliberately build a certain consciousness, the scales of this life will be very unkind to you. I have grown to understand that success is not a mistake, but it's not a problem for a Christian. Success is not ever going to be a problem. Maybe for the world it is. But for a new creature in Christ, a new creation in Christ, success is not your problem. It will never be your problem. In fact, 
you are a success where you are before even anything is done on you you're still better than the hardest worker in the world before you even do anything you're still better than the man that has worked all his life in the world if you believe it shout amen because he has given to you everything that pertains to life and godliness we have it we have it we have it and this is something i'll put to remembrance until it starts to manifest you know it's one thing to know the scripture and it's another to live in the experience of the scripture somebody said amen it's one thing to know the word it's another to live in the experience of that reality and every other day it's almost as though there is a crack on the egg ka, ka, ka. some people are breaking out or some have already somebody said hallelujah but the life is there he says god is not a man that he should lie neither the son of man that he should what repent he can't change it the amplified says neither is he a son of man that he should feel repentance or compunction for what he has promised who has understood it let me explain it from the amplified so you understand it when the bible says that he's not a son of man that he should feel repentance or compunction for what he has promised huh in other words he can't say eh, i shouldn't have promised greatness because now i promise what i can't fulfill <laughs> did you understand what i just said god is not intimidated by what he spoke on your life however big it is somebody said amen neither should you be intimidated tell yourself i'm not intimidated by the glory god has promised on my life somebody say amen shout amen and then he asks the question has he said and shall he not do has he said and he shall not do but you see god said that we believe him by his stripes who are healed and then i believed god and then my relative died so why did he die if i believed god you are lying god is true <laughs> you didn't believe but i believe no you did what you think is believing but you didn't believe but I believe, yeah, yeah, in your own idea of faith. But not the God kind of faith. If it was the God kind of faith, it will work. Stop blaming God for your inefficiencies. For your lack of results. Some of you, you even go beyond blaming, eh, my goodness. You blame people, you blame things, you blame the government, you blame everything. Everything is wrong. Have you been around people who are a victim of everybody? Let me tell you, if you ever meet a person and they tell you, on the first job, my boss was bad. On the second job, my boss was bad. On the third job, my boss was bad. On the fifth job, I got a worse one. On the sixth, it was a beast. Put on your red light. <laughs> put on your red light see when I was young I would meet such people and think hmm yeah maybe the bosses are bad then you live with them for two weeks and you're like oh <laughs> the bosses were not bad do I have a witness let me tell you all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Yes, the world is evil, but not everybody is evil. Yes, the world is deceptive and fallen, but not everybody is fallen. That is why many of you have positioned yourself in spaces of, of receiving the worst in this life. Because your mindset has already stereotyped don't tell me men you haven't tried them all hey! 
Don't tell me men. No. None of them are bad. Yours is good. <laughs> Somebody said amen. So don't tell me about this nation. Don't tell me about this. Everywhere. Every no. No. It's not the whole world. That's why this is the problem Elijah had. God, I'm the only one, the anointed, the prophet, the God. I'm the, I am the one only. And God told him, hey, hey, 7,000. <laughs> Somebody said, amen. In every dispensation, God will reserve himself a remnant. Praise God. Don't ever think that you're the only person. <laughs> no. There are others and you'll wake up. <laughs> you will wake up. That slumber. You will what? Wake up. Somebody said amen. Let God be true. And every man a liar. He is not a man. Has he said and not done? He's asking you, what haven't I done? Ah, but me, I believe. And then it didn't work. No, 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 no. You're lying. You could not have believed me the way you're supposed to believe me and it did not work. You know, I've learned to be humble when things don't work. I go back to God and ask him, where did I miss it? I've learned to ask God. God, I believe in this person. Man... I remember one time I set out a line to pray for the dead. <laughs> oh God. You pray for a person? Nothing. Praise God. And as though that's not enough, they bring someone towards death and you say, okay, let me try with this one. You pray for them, they die immediately. <laughs> and you're like, oh God, did my prayer kill them? Yeah, it was the will of God. They had to go. But the first time I saw a dead person come to life through prayer, I stopped giving an excuse. Somebody said, Amen. Shout, Amen. We are without excuse. If it did not work, it was not God's fault. But you know, somebody even cuts a wire. Oh, don't even tell me about God, and I don't even want to hear anything about God. I believe this and I believe that and didn't work. So don't, don't tell me anything about God. Don't tell me anything about God. Then <laughs> you look at this piece of clay, cutting a wire. <laughs> For its maker. Don't tell me about God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Joshua 21 verses 43. The Bible says, And the Lord gave unto Israel all the land which he swear to give unto their fathers, and they possessed it and dwelt therein. And the Lord gave them rest round about according to all that he swore unto their fathers. And there stood not a man of all their enemies before them. The Lord delivered all their enemies into their hand. There failed not out any of the good thing which God had spoken unto the house of Israel. All came to pass. All! So why are you worried? What's making you lose sleep? Okay. You leave the chariot and don't believe. It will not make the faith of God without effect. One man will walk out with a miracle and you'll stay where you are. And you'll blame the world, the church, the teacher, the pastor, the evangelist, the prophet. The, you're going to blame everybody. But the word. Is available for anybody who believes. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. He said none of the words failed. Everything the Lord spoke came to pass. Everything God promised came to pass. Everything. Everything. I don't care where you're starting from. You might have had a crazy life of 20 years. Okay, now you're beginning a fresh 2019. Let's begin from there. The word of God is still true. You know, some of you think that your past is bigger than God's word. Let me tell you.
tell you, no mistake, even the worst mistake in scripture, can break the word of God. Did you understand what I just said? Even the worst mistake you have ever done, or a man could ever do on earth, can be reversed by the word of God. Because he does not repent. He doesn't pull back his word. If he says by his stripes you are healed, you are healed. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? He says you're blessed. He means it. you are. There is nothing in the world. The Bible says the scripture cannot be broken. It cannot. Even if it cannot. But you see, that point where you learn to take God for his word and say, you know what? I don't know how. I don't know which way. I don't even know how it's going to happen. But because you said, somebody said hallelujah. Oh. See, I have learned to wage war with myself. I've learned to deal with my flesh when it comes to the word of God. Because you see, Satan can come and tell you things, but if it is, if it is, you understand? The ifs become like a million. And before you know that, you have like a million reasons why it should not happen. Praise God. But you see, sometimes it makes sense to just look into the word and say, but God, you said none failed. None failed. None failed. John 3, 33, he says, he that has received his testimony has said to this seal that God is true. If you have believed God, if you have taken time to say, I have received the testimony of God, he that has received his testimony has said to this seal that God is true. It means no man who has taken time to holistically give himself to the word of God has not proved it that it works. That's why it says, give yourself wholly to these things. Meditate on them. Do you understand what I'm saying? Give yourself wholly to them. He says that your profiting will appear unto all. The problem is some of us, we just read the word, uh, yeah, thank you, Lord. Hey, the someone was nice. Then you dumped it there. No, no, no. The Bible says, speak the truth in your heart. You must learn to speak the truth in your heart. Do you understand it? When the word of God says this is his soul, this, this, put it in there. Because meditation is speaking the truth in your heart. Put it in your spirit, in there. Consider, give yourself wholly to these things. Praise God. The Bible says your profiting will appear unto all. No man attends to this thing to his testimony, and carries not the seal that God is true. But me has believed, have someone, I have written someone, I've written notes, and they're not working, you're lying. How can it not work? How can the word of God not work? How can, tell me how. Imagine God said, let there be light, and light didn't appear. How? Do you understand what I just said? Imagine saying, now let's create man in our own image. As he forms you, he would come out in complete. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? But there is no way God speaks a word. And it, the word of God cannot fail. It cannot fail. Even if you try, it can't. Because this is the absoluteness of his power. The Bible says he has exalted his word above his name. Do you know what that means? Do you know what it means to exalt his word above his name? If I am Jehovah Jireh, your provider, I have to first cease to be Jehovah Jireh before my word fails. Do you understand what I'm saying? In other words, if I fail to provide for you, then I'm not provision. Do you understand? He even refuses to be called provision if he cannot provide for you. He doesn't say, you know, if I fail to provide for you, oh, I say provision, but I just failed. No, he says, I will lose my name if I can't exalt my word. 
if I say that I'm your healer and fail to heal you, then I'm sick. Has God? Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? He has exalted his word above his name. Tell your neighbor, believe God. There is no way the word of God cannot work. It's not possible for it not to work. How can it not work? How can it not work? A certain pastor contacted me long ago and said, you know, my ministry has failed. I've tried and it has failed. And even if I try to teach and preach, I feel I can't minister the way people like you minister. And I told him, simply preach my sermons. <laughs> Just preach them. Because if they work for me, why are you wasting time? I told him, duplicate, I'll never hang you. Devotionals are available. If you get stuck, look out at me, devotional, you'll get a Sunday sermon. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? It's not busting, it's the truth. Because if it has worked for me, how can it not work for you? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Preach what we preach. Just listen to the word and just get it. Become a student of it, receive it in your spirit, share it. You'll see that God will start deeper in you. I said. You will see when you sit under the right teaching, lights go on. Do you understand what I'm saying? Lights go on. You will preach even deeper than what you had. And this ministry is a success now. It's growing. Simply by just... Simply. Simply. Because you see, the word of God is so broad. It's too big. We can never finish it. Even if we try, it is too much. Yet all of it, he said, is yeah and amen. Tell your neighbor the word works. Men fail, but the word works. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. In Hebrews chapter 12, verses 2, give you the message version of that. He gives you the instruction of how to do this. How do I make the word effectual? Are you hearing me? How do, I, how do I make the word of God work for me? He says, keep your eyes on what? On Jesus, who both began and finished this rest we were in. Did you hear that? How are you going to make the word of God Get your eyes off what isn't working. Get your eyes off the economy. Get your eyes off your pay. Get your eyes off the woman who packed last week. Get your eyes off what's not working. Get your eyes off what the doctor said. Get your eyes off what the bank is saying. Get your eyes off what the school is saying. Get your eyes off where you're going. He says, just keep your eyes on Jesus. He says, who both began and finish this race we are in. Are you hearing me? Did you understand what I just said? Did you understand what that means? It means the thing you're running, your master ran. The thing you're believing God for, your master finished it long ago. Somebody said hallelujah. The Bible says, study how he did it. Hallelujah. Study how he did it. Praise God. Just study. Study. Oh, the seas are raging. The waters are spinning here and there. Directions, men are going to die. The Son of God is sleeping. Study. The Bible says how he did it. When you get in calamity, you know, and disasters have befallen, don't be like an unbeliever. You know, oh my God, oh my goodness, Jesus. Ooh. No, no, no. Hey, 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 peace, peace. What's going on? 
What's happening? Oh, you know, calm down. You have peace. Let's calm down. But you see, it's coming. It's going to be time. Help me. How he did it. What doesn't give Jesus pressure should not give you pressure. What does not make him lose sleep should not make you lose study. When I saw this thing, I started to read every way Jesus responded to devils, to the sick, when luck was there. How did he do it? Study him. That is why when we're doing miracles in Fanero, you realize we don't do No. In the name of Jesus, get out. Go. She's free. Take her away. Yeah, the Lord has delivered her. Are you hearing me? <laughs> Talitha Kumai, little God, get up. In the name of Jesus, thy faith has made you whole. See how he did it. Somebody shout hallelujah. Then for you said, now you devils. Eh? <laughs> oh God. One time we're not over at the university. We told guys we are going to pray. Some guys started to. Rakata. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah! <laughs> what is that? Praise God, hallelujah. Study how he did it. What he did do when he found a dead man. Did you lose sleep because the child was dead? No. They tell him, Lazarus, your friend is dead. He said, oh God. No, he says, no. Lazarus' sickness shall not end in death. He's dead. It's okay. I am the resurrection and the life. He makes his cup of tea like nothing is happening because he knows when he walks to that grave, no hell, no highway, no fire, no brimstone will stop the Son of God from raising Lazarus from the dead. Tell your neighbor, don't be second by the stuff around you. Study how he did it. The Bible says he never lost sight of where he was headed. That exhilarating finish in and with God. He knew that the end is in and with God. The Bible says he could not put up along with anything in the way. Cross, shame, persecution, those accounts. They go underwater, they use eggs, they use papers, they did this, they are this, they are that. Now the Bible says, and now he is there in the place of honor, right alongside God. And the next verse says that when you find yourselves flagging in your faith, go over that story again. When things are not working, go back to your master and say, how did he do it? And he told him, item by item, that long litany of hostility, he plowed through, that will shoot adrenaline into your souls. And you say, mm, if death could not hold him, it can't kill. Somebody shout hallelujah. The story of Jesus is an inspiration. Do you know, before I do healing meetings, I look for a miracle. I put myself in it. I enter there. <laughs> when I'm going for healing meetings in Crusade, I look for one story. Random, Zarias' daughter. Item per item. Somebody said hallelujah. I go over it again and again and again and again and again 
again and again. And as you're doing it, God is saying, you're pumping adrenaline in your soul. As you're reading the story of Jesus, you're pumping adrenaline in your soul. That's how you receive faith. That's how you make the word of God work. You go around that story. The son of God never fails. I will never fail. I'll never. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout amen. One time. There's a testimony Paul spoke. Of the people in Thessalonica. They began as babes. They a lot they did not know. But when the word of God came to these babes in Thessalonica, there is a way they responded to the word. And that is why I tell people it's important to know how to respond to the word. Many of you are too passive for God to operate on you. You're too passive. Men on pulpits are not entertaining you. We're not film stars. We're not comedians. No. No. These words he says that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. You must learn how to participate in the world. I remember when I was a young man, and I learned this very early, and a man would speak something. Oh! The moment they speak something that I know I must get, mm, mm, I say, Robo Kotolo. Sarapatalabayakata. And then you see the next to a guy who's just like. Why are they shouting? I didn't assume that somebody else. Why, why are they? What's happening? He says in verses 5, give me the message version. He says, First Thessalonians chapter 1 verses 5. He says, when the message we preached came to you, he says, it was not just words. Don't listen to the word of God like you're simply listening to words. These are not just words. This is God speaking into your destiny. No wonder it's not working for you. Because probably you come in a service and you say, well, you're listening to a news reader. You're just listening to just somebody speaking. You enjoy the words. They help you sleep. Are you hearing me? He says, when the message you preached came to you, it wasn't just words. He says, Something happened in you. The Holy Spirit put still in your conviction. You paid careful attention to the way we lived among you. And Paul had to say in the next verse, and determined to live the way, that way, yourselves in hearing me. You imitated the master in imitating us. In other words, Paul was preaching the word, but in preaching the word, he also was a doer of the word. And as he was a doer of the word, the folk that had Paul preaching, they were not just listening. They were also doers. Even as he did the word. Are you hearing me? And he says, and as you imitated us, he says, you imitated the master. And he says, although great trouble accompanied the word. You have the word and after service, the landlord came on the door. Boo, boo, boo. And then you tell the person in the house, Shh. boo, boo, boo. Shh. Maybe the word came you, you received it and you failed in your purpose. After the sermon, they fired you the next day. I think I'm in the wrong place. I think things are not working here. I think I need to go to the mountain. I think, no. <laughs> Let me tell you, some of us go to the level where it doesn't matter what happens. We know the word. 
and we know God. Let me tell you. Some of you celebrate. I wish you were there. I wish some of you were there. Do you understand what I'm saying? Something happens and then men say, that is his end. Do you understand what I'm saying? That one is good. That one is history. That one, that's history. And I'm still here. <laughs> Man, tell your name, but let God be true. And every man a liar. Yes, trouble could come. So what? If it wasn't after that, so what? Oh my goodness. If we had not believed God a certain way, we would not have the troubles that came. What would Facebook want with Grace Rubega? What would it want with me? I'm not even on it. What would it want with me? But I believed the word. <laughs> I just what? <laughs> believe the word. Some of you are things that are looking for you. Are because in the spirit realm you're noticeable. <laughs> Some things are pursuing you because in the spirit realm you can be seen. Paul, we know. When things come, when you believe God, that doesn't mean God has failed you or you're in the wrong faith or the wrong one or the wrong church. No! Study your master. Item by item. He's on the cross. The Pharisees and Sadducees are clapping their hands. But the man of God is poor. Poor. He's looking at Johnny and he's like, poor. After they know that the man is on the cross, he tells them, it is. The church was burst. <laughs> oh, brethren, for our light affliction, which are but for a moment, they cannot be compared to the glory that shall be revealed, the weight of the glory that shall be revealed at the appearance of our Christ. While we look not are the things that are seen. For the things that are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Ask your neighbor, what do you see? They found cancer in my body, so they found the cancer cells, yes. The things that are seen. Listen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Tell you neighbor, it's not new. Your master went through it. The apostles went through it. Study the script. Let's go back in Thessalonians. He says, although great trouble he says, accompany the word. Because when you receive the word a certain way, certain afflictions will come because of the word you believed. If you want to avoid those attacks, don't listen to the word. It says that the day Satan comes, he just kills you. We shall bury. That's why the Bible says, and... When attacks come on account of the word, he says many are discouraged. They have no root in them. So they endure for a time. And that, give, give me the message of that. He says, but they sat shallow soil of character that when emotions wear off and some difficulty arrives, there is nothing to show for it. Somebody said hallelujah. There is nothing. When things come, when situations come, when circumstances come, to test the word in some people. 
Ah, uh, they are gone. Some people believe in God because everything is okay. A young man one time said, you know, I stopped believing God. Why? My mother died. I stopped. Some of us, even if we lost everyone and we also died, would still believe God. <laughs> Somebody said hallelujah. So, but there is persecution, the Bible says in the KJV, that comes in account of the word. He says, and the Bible says, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. When they were telling you more than a conqueror, you screamed. You didn't know that your faith is going to be second. And now they will test you. Oh, more than a conqueror. Okay. Uh huh. Let's see how you respond. Oh! Then you pass out. But when everything was okay, I am more than a conqueror. Give me the Amplified on verse 16. The Bible says, and in the same way, the one sown upon stony ground are those who, when they hear the word at once, they receive and accept and welcome it with joy, like all of you are standing up. You even have words over and again. This sermon, a eh, today of praise. Hey. You get pains and scream. Hey, you understand? But I've heard this. But they have no real root in themselves. And so they endure for a little while. So when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, they immediately are offended. They become displeased, indignant, resentful, and they stumble and fall away. Can you say, but this sister used to sit somewhere there. What happened? But she got problems and said, mm -hmm. She didn't benefit. <laughs> what if you did not believe? Will that make the word of God without effect? Will that make the faith of, okay, you fell away. You mean everyone in Fanero will fall away? No. There is a person next to you for whom it's working. They studied the story item by item. When they were going through stuff, they see the man on the cross, adrenaline pumps their souls. They get more faith in the morning. The more they are afflicted, the stronger they look. Because they know this is not come to kill them. It is come to check their faith. So, he says of the Thessalonians, when they received the message, the Bible says, trouble came. He says, he says that, Although great trouble accompanied the word, the Bible says you were able to take great joy from the Holy Spirit. Taking the trouble with the joy, the joy with the trouble. In other words, yeah, things are not working, but I am happy. I'm talking about that person who can receive the worst news in the world and walk in the room with the biggest smile. Then they say, brother, what's happening? He said, oh, joy of the Lord. Joy of the Lord. Oh, glory. Joy of the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. That's why I tell people, the day you sleep hungry, put on your best clothes the next day. If you have one suit in life, the day you sleep hungry, put it on the next day with your best tie and just walk around. <laughs> oh God! Somebody sound hallelujah. So the Bible says they took it with great joy. Why? Because they were drinking from the ministration of the Holy Spirit. And now the Bible says in the next verse, do you know that because of that, all over the provinces, of Uganda, Africa, Asia, America. Believers look to you. They look up to you. The word has gotten around. The Bible says, your lives are echoing the master's word. Not only in the provinces, but all over the place. The news of your faith in God is out. We don't even need to say anything anymore. You are 
the message. When people want to read the Bible, they look at you. Joy unspeakable, full of glory. Somebody shout amen. Let God beat you and every man a liar. Tell your neighbor the word works. And if I've ever believed it, tell your neighbor if I've ever believed it, I'm going to believe it this time like I've never believed before. Create space for some crazy prayers. Now I want you to speak things that can break a chair without sitting on it. Come on. I want you to say things that can cause an earthquake on a continent because they are so big. Believe God. Speak. Rabataye. Sakalalabaya. Come on. Speak how long you want to leave. How big your ministry is going to be. Speak how big your business is going to be. How your marriage is going to be. How your children. And don't speak stuff you've seen. Speak things I has not seen. Ear has not heard and has not entered the heart of men. Talk to yourself. Speak in your heart. Right now I feel we are creating things. We are like in a factory, a spiritual industry. Men are manufacturing things. Come on. I see it. Oh, believe God. Believe God. Believe God. Believe God for that miracle. Believe God for that healing. Believe God for your breakthrough. Believe God for the return of your child. Believe God for your ministry. Believe God for your family. Believe God for your husband. Believe God for your wife. Believe God for the breakthrough. Believe God. Believe God. Believe God for the changing of things. Believe God. Believe God. Walk. If you have a clutch, throw it. Believe God. Believe God. The deaf are receiving. They're hearing. Believe God. Blindness is living. Remove your glasses. Some of you are going to see right now. Believe God. Tumors are living. Believe God. HIV is living your body. Believe God. Cancerous tumors are living. Believe God. Cancer is living. Believe God. Incurable diseases are living. Believe God. for you. Believe God. The windows of heaven are open. Believe God. Your womb is open. Believe God. Your job is come. Believe God. Your marriage is working. Believe God. What I have not seen. What ear has not heard? Believe God. The Spirit takes over your soul. When the Spirit picks up your soul, 
Rabakatala Bayelele Bosatala Reba Raba Zakatere Prololo Bosorobosole Bakaya. Come on, pray a little longer. I feel great things are happening here. Pray for your family, your family, your father's household. Pray for it. forth an apostolic invitation right now I just had the Spirit of God say that some of you are receiving faith as a gift and the Spirit of God is moving right now he's touching he's touching you're gonna be amazed at the things you're gonna believe God for you're gonna be amazed at the miracles that are gonna take place on your hands you're gonna be amazed at the things your eyes will see I see the gift of faith the gift of faith the gift of faith, the gift of faith, the gift of faith. How are you? My God, my God, my God. Prophets, may your eyes see. Masters, may your eyes see. Evangelists, may your eyes see. 
receive. Receive it. Receive it. the man help for Come on, clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. Now I want you to clap like a miracle took place. Clap like a miracle took place. Clap like a miracle happened in your family. Give God a clap of faith. Like a miracle happened in your life, in your ministry, with your children, with your finances and everything. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now if you're here and you've never given your life to Christ, thank you, Holy Spirit. You're going to repeat this one after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I've heard your word and I believe it. Said, I believe that you died and rose again for my sins. Tonight I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I'm born again. Amen. God bless you. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Sonero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041 466 4291 or email us at Panero at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowship at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero, make nonsense.